Good morning to all my brothers and sisters in Christ. What a wonderful um, occasion is it not again to meet up around the Word of God and hear what He has on His heart for each of us. Today's scripture reading comes from Galatians chapter 6, the last uh, few verses from verse 11. See with what large letters I am writing to you with my own hand. It is those who want to make a good showing in the faith, in the flesh, that would compel you to be circumcised, and only in order that they may not be persecuted for the cross of Christ. For even those who receive circumcision do not themselves keep the law, but they desire to have you circumcised, that they may glory in your flesh. But far be it from me to glory, except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me, and I to the world. For neither circumcision counts for anything nor uncircumcision, but a new creation. Peace and mercy be upon all who walk by the rule upon the Israel of God. Henceforth, let no man trouble me, for I bear on my body the marks of Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Somewhere I read a story about, um, from the philosopher Homer. In this little story, he tells of um, a group of girls singing near the shore of their little town they lived in. They sang beautiful music, inspiring music. They loved singing. And as they sung, their songs were taken by the wind over the ocean. And as the ships passed by the shore and they heard the beautiful music coming from the girls singing, they lost control of their ships and were shipwrecked on the coast. There was, however, one wise captain who knew about what happened to so many others before him that he, uh, he, he compelled his shipmates to put plugs in their ears so they cannot hear the beautiful music coming from the shore. Ophius played on the harp, and the music was so beautiful coming from the harp that they sailed past without stranding their ship on the rock. The music from the girls that are so beautiful and compelling lets me think about modern music. Not the kind that an orchestra makes or someone that sings make, makes, but the, the modern music of our time, the philosophies, the uh, inclinations, uh, our ethics. You see, and the, the kind of music that we hear today in modern society says there's no objective truth. 
and all roads lead to Rome. No objective truths. There is a scene in the play, uh, Fiddler on the Roof, where two gentlemen argue with each other uh, about a certain subject. At one point, the one says to the other, you know, you are right. And the other one looks back at his friend and says, you know what, you are right too. From a distance, someone else was watching them and heard what happened and, and walked closer and said, but how is it possible that both of you can be right? And the two arguing friends looked at the stranger and said, you know what, you are right too. There is no objective truth in our life anymore. And all roads lead to Rome. No matter if, it, if you believe in, in Muhammad and Islam, Allah, Buddha, or the three million gods of the Hinduism, all roads lead to Rome we say. In a certain sense, dear friends, that was the big problem with the Christians in Galatia, especially the Jewish Christians. You say, they want, see, they wanted their bread buttered on both sides, avoiding so the suffering that comes with being a Christian and confessing that Christ is your Lord. Paul's response is frank and, and to the man. In his mind, there is only one gospel. And that's the gospel of peace with God and the freedom that comes with it. But, on the darker side of this new life in Christ, you can expect, says Paul, to be persecuted. And the Jewish Christians knew this very well. They had fanatic friends and relatives and other Jews that would do anything to persuade the Jewish Christians to be and deny Christ. Paul knew suffering very well. If one only reads 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians, you, you get a very Good idea. Five times the Jewish leaders gave him 39 lashes. He was shipwrecked three times. He went hungry many times. He went without shelter many times. He lost his life at the end. because of his belief in Christ. The false teachers chose the easy way out, Paul says. And they even boast about their excellence in keeping the law. Paul, on the other hand, prays that God will keep him strong in his conviction to boast about the cross. So we read about it in verse 14. And in Philippians 2, Paul names all the criteria that made him a wonderful, great Jew with a bright future in front of him. And then says, 
All of that is rubbish. All that matters is Christ. Paul wants to convince us in this passage that there are two ways in which we can boast. On the one hand, we can boast about our excellence and our achievements in keeping the law and in living a pure and good life. Or we can boast about the cross. But boasting about the cross, my dear friends, was a quite impolite thing to do in Roman times. For example, they would euphemistically, when they speak about the cross, say something like the following, Hang him on the unlucky tree. But the word crooks, crux, cross, would never pass their lips. Paul proudly boasts about the cross of Jesus Christ. It's the symbol of death, the symbol of life and freedom. that annihilates all judgment over sin. About this, about this cross, Paul boasts proudly. Paul is a new man. He has a new identity. And he got this new identity through the cross and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So it is with us too. Today, we don't believe in something like sin anymore. The modern world's music plays a different tune. There is no sin. And if you do something that may have the appearance of sin, you may think to yourself, well, God will understand. I had no other choice. It is okay. But that's not true. Because why would Christ then come to this world and die on, on a cross of all things? You see, my dear friends, sin is multidimensional. You, sin is when relationships in your life break down, when your relationship with God breaks down, and, and you start living a life apart from God. Sin is when your relationship with yourself breaks down. And you think less of yourself than God thinks of you, or more of yourself than God thinks of you. Sin is when our relationship with nature breaks down. We live in an age where uh, global warming and, and, and all of that is on the table. All symptoms of us humans, disrespecting our relationship with nature. Sin is also prevalent when our relationship with our fellow human beings break down. It's not true that everything goes. Because God will in the end, in any case, forgive all our sins. Yes, he did. But you have to accept that. You have to accept that you are a new creature in the guise of God. And because of that big change in your life, you 
live differently than previously. You see, my dear friends, the, the Christian gospel, the Christian good news is unique in so many ways. We believe in a unique person. The Son of God. God Himself that came to this world, became one of us in flesh, who teached us, and who, in the end, died on that humiliating cross so that we can have new life abundantly. We, we have a unique relationship with this God. We have a relationship that doesn't need any intermediators anymore. We live in a relationship with this God free and openly. We, we live released from the power of sin over our lives. We cannot force anyone to believe in Christ or even to love God. That's not in our power. That is for the Holy Spirit to do. But we can make music far more beautiful than the music of this world. The gospel is that music. The gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ is that music. And we hear that music in, in the hope that we as Christians have and, and live by. Even when life is at its darkest, we have hope. We have the hope that we are saved in Christ. And that God will not abandon us, even if the tribulations and persecutions are harsh. We make the music of love, of a self-sacrificing love. God giving himself, and us giving ourselves. To him and to each other. It's the music of acceptance, of unconditional love and acceptance. No one is outside of God's acceptance. No matter who you are or what life you have lived up until this point in time, you are acceptable to God. He loves you. It's the music of forgiveness, of a God that forgave our sins and trespasses in total, past, present and future. It is the music of forgiveness that we give to one another when someone hurts us or does something against us. It's the music of uh, it's the music of getting rid of all that guilt, that big bag full of big stones that we carry along with us through life. It's the music that empties the bottled up emotions of anger and bitterness. Yes, my dear friends, that 
is the music that keeps the ship away from the shore, that keeps the ship safe on the ocean of life. It is through humble confession of God's grace through Jesus Christ and a life of love through the power of the Holy Spirit that we make music that changes the world. Amen. Dear Lord, we thank you for your precious and gracious love, your unconditional, bountiful, without boundaries, love that you showed and gave us. We thank you, dear Lord, that you set us free to live a free life in relationship with you. May we, dear Lord, see the pitfalls of our modern society. May we recognize the easy way out. May we see how we too sometimes want to butter our bread on both sides so that we aren't persecuted, aren't chained, aren't ridiculed because of our belief in you. May we stand fast as Paul stood fast in his conviction that through the cross of Jesus Christ we are set free. May we too full well knowing that persecution is part and parcel of the life in Christ. Boast about the cross. We pray this in your name, dear Lord. Amen. My dear friends, my God, our Father, be with you. May you experience his presence, his love, in exceptional ways and places in your life. Amen.